गुड डे डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अ वीडियो ऑन री ऑब्जॉर्बन ऑफ ग्लूकोज ग्लूकोज इज एन एसेंशियल फ्यूल फॉर द बॉडी हिंस द किडनी री ऑब्जॉर्ब ऑल द फिल्टर ग्लूकोज एट द वेरी फर्स्ट ऑपरचुनिटी दैट इज इन द प्रोक्सिमल टिब्यूल आई एम ड्रॉइंग एन एफ फ्रॉम दिस इज द बॉमस कैप्सूल एंड देन इट विल लीड टू द ट्यूबुलर पार्ट The first portion of the tibular part is the proximal tubule. This is the proximal tubule of the nephron. Then it leads to the loop of Henle. The thick portion of the loop of Henle. and then the early distal tubule then the late distal tubule and the collecting duct late distal tubule and the collecting duct these are the glomerular capillaries with the efferent and the efferent arteriole and this yellow shaded region is the proximal tubule or it is also called the proximal convoluted tubule please remember all the filtered glucose is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule all the filtered glucose is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule or the proximal tubule Ninety percent of this is reabsorbed in the first half of the proximal tubule, which is known as, which is mediated by the carrier SGLT two or sodium glucose co-transporter two, and ten percent is reabsorbed in the second half of the proximal tubule. It is known as SGLT one by sodium glucose co-transporter one. so by sodium glucose co transporter 2 and sodium glucose co transporter 1 the sglt are known as sodium glucose co transporters they are carriers they are carriers they mediate secondary active transport I'm drawing a tubular epithelial cell with the brush border, convoluted border, brush border. This brush border has microvilli, which greatly increases the surface area available for reabsorption. There is the epithelial cell. and then there is a apical membrane apical membrane is the membrane facing the lumen in the lumen tubular fluid flows and there is there is the basolateral membrane basolateral membrane is the membrane facing the blood the first step You guess it right. Is the operation of the basolateral sodium potassium ATPase pump. This is a sodium potassium ATPase pump. It pumps out three sodium ions out of the cell and pumps in two potassium ions. So it is known as primary active transport. Active because ions are pumped against the concentration gradient. 
एंड प्राइमरी एक्टिव बिकॉज इंटीग्रल मेम्रेन प्रोटीन्स नोन एज आयन पम्प्स इंटीग्रल मेम्रेन प्रोटीन मीन्स प्रोटीन्स एम्बेडेड इन द सेल मेम्रेन नोन एज आयन पम्प्स यूज एनर्जी इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट इट सेल्फ सो एनर्जी इज यूज इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट इट सेल्फ देफो इट इज कॉल्ड एज प्राइमरी एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑपरेशन ऑफ द बेजोलाइट्रल सोडियम पोटेशियम एटीपेज पम्प This is followed by a process on the apical side. As the sodium concentration is lowered, sodium moves downhill along its concentration gradient, and the energy release is used to drive the uphill movement of glucose. So, lot of information at one go. As sodium moves downhill along its concentration gradient, see due to the sodium potassium it is formed, the sodium concentration is lowered. So, sodium moves downhill. along its concentration gradient as it moves along its concentration gradient it carries glucose against its concentration gradient so where is the energy derived from the energy is derived from ionic gradients created by the sodium potassium atpase pump in the first place ionic gradients created by the sodium potassium atpase pumps in the first place and this is an example of secondary active transport This is an example of secondary active transport. This is an example of secondary active transport. So sodium and glucose mediated by SGLT two and one. An example of secondary active transport. SGLT two in the first half of the proximal tubule. SGLT one in the second half of the proximal tubule. on the basolateral side so this is secondary active transport secondary active because it is secondary to ionic gradients created by the primary active transport of sodium in the first place on the basolateral side there is the glucose transporter which allows glucose to exit from the cell this is facilitated diffusion this is how glucose is reabsorbed by secondary active transport and facilitated diffusion the glucose transporter used for secondary active transport is sglt2 in the first half of the proximal tubule and sglt1 in the second half of the proximal tubule and both these are inhibited by and sglt2 is inhibited by glucoresins a class of drugs used in the treatment of insulin resistant type 2 diabetes mellitus these are known as glucoresins glucori So the SGLT2 is inhibited by glucoresins. Hence, it is used in the treatment of insulin-resistant type 2 diabetes mellitus. to sum up the proximal tubule reabsorbs all the filtered glucose to sum up the proximal tubule reabsorbs all the filtered glucose 
Bermuda's 90% is reabsorbed in the first half by SGLT2 and 10% in the second half by SGLT1. The first step in reabsorption is operation of the nasolateral sodium potassium ATPase pump. This is followed by the operation of the sodium glucose co-transporter on the apical side. The first step is primary active transport and ionic gradients derived from it are used to drive the second active transport of glucose. And then there is facilitated diffusion of glucose mediated by GLUT channels. And the secondary active transport is inhibited by glycorrhizins. Thank you for watching my channel and have a good day.